Hi there, I'm Barry Brown and I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about our Kai paper, the halting problem when self-driving cars stop in traffic. The paper is based around a collection of YouTube data that we've put together of different self-driving car systems, focusing on this issue where these cars can often stop on the road in sometimes problematic ways. Um, our goal is not to review or evaluate those systems as other people who, who are doing that work, but really try and understand a little bit better what's going on in these interactions these self-driving cars are having on the road. And in particular, the role that halting plays and why, by sometimes halting incorrectly, their car, these cars are getting into some interactional problems. More broadly, we're interested in introducing a sort of new genre of interaction for, for HCI, this new design space, which is that of the interaction between self-driving cars and their movements and other humans on the road. Let me start though by playing you a clip of a Waymo uh, driving in a suburban street, and it's gonna have an interaction with this group of pedestrians who are waiting to cross. The, 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 the car, the, uh, the video is recorded from the back seat of the car. You can see a little bit of an insert there, which also shows you the state of the, 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 the Waymo's model of the world in the bottom right there. So you can see that the car comes up to the intersection and the family gesture for the, uh, they gesture for the car to continue and keep coming round the corner. Sorry, self-driving car. <laughs> it, it, it sees you, so no worries about that. <laughs> so while the car does um, finally make it round the, the, around the junction and it's, it's not perhaps unsafe, certainly a little slightly on frustrating interaction and indeed the passenger in the back has to apologize for the self-driving car's behavior. The problem that we get here is you get this little standoff where the family moved across the road and then the car moves. They then get back on the pavement, the car then stops and you get this little standoff that you actually often see quite commonly um, with these self these self-driving uh, vehicles. The problem as we identify it is their inability to understand a basic unit of road interaction, which is yielding. In traffic, um, it's very frequent that one road user will indicate to another through slowing down or stopping or moving in a certain way that they are yielding for the other road user. And this is, as I say, a kind of real basic building block of traffic civility that these systems often struggle with. Let's take a look at a different system, the Tesla FSD system, seeing how it also copes with the situation where there's yielding going on. Again, you can see while the Tesla does manage to safely get through the intersection, it actually allows five cars to go in front of it, even though it actually had the, uh, the, right, the right of way there. Again, this fundamental problem, it can't see when cars are yielding for it. But in this case, the yielding is slightly more complicated than just a go uh, yield pair, because in an intersection like this, you actually find that the that the, the movement of the cars is, is a little bit more kind of inter interconnected. If you look, for example, uh, the Tesla gets blocked by this, this, uh, this black car, the blue car slows down slowly, 
but the Tesla doesn't react in time to actually kind of get through the intersection and it then has to, in the end, break. If you look at work on um, uh, inter on kind of human to human interaction, you see that this is actually a kind of recent and quite important finding that we don't just sequentially take turns that often actually our actions are responsive in an ongoing way to the actions of another. And this can be seen in, in, in road interactions that you get this tight mutual adjustment, this reflexive adjustment of each um, each person to each other. And this is essential for things like yielding because you need to be able to constantly monitor one uh, other road user's movements and, if, and, and, and deal with that in how you move yourself. Um, we look at other data in the paper, but I don't have so much time today. But just to kind of wrap it all up, I want to talk a lot about it in, in, in discussion. Um, I think this is a kind of interesting case of looking at advanced AIs in the world and how they're behaving when they're having to interact with other um, with other um, road users. The key problem, one of the key problems perhaps we identify is this problem of joint action that self-driving cars and other road users need to produce action together. And this is something that they still clearly struggle with. They can deal with the kinematics of the road, but this production of joint action is much more, much more difficult. Uh, getting to more depth, we talk a lot, we talk a lot about uh, the importance of sequence and timing, but also not just simply that things happen in a sequence on the road, but that also there's this, this continual mutual adjustment going on. And understanding that is really quite important, I think, for producing more socially uh, responsive agents, be they robots or self-driving cars. And lastly, uh, we make a kind, of a, a kind of final point in the paper about the importance of repair and intersubjectivity in the production of joint safe roads. Um, and we just, clearly we can see in the behavior of the systems that we're looking at, they're not quite there yet, although they've made such great, um, great advances. But this actually provides, I think, a more kind of a more uh, broader issue, which is whether really it is actually possible that we can have intersubjective agents and how essential is that going to be to have safe and equitable road environments. Thank you very much.